Okay, so we'd like to be able to have some kind of variable here on the left-hand side that we can compare against something, right? And depending on the status, we can uh, evaluate to true or false, yes? Well, one of the problems with a, a, a components, uh, with this particular component, is that it's being implemented as a function, right? Now, implementing components as a function is the best way of implementing components, okay? But it has its limitations. It has its limitations, right? Uh, the, the, the best way to implement this as function is by, because it makes it easier to, uh, easier to maintain, easier to test, right? Functions don't maintain any state, right? So you can very easily create some functional tests, right? And, and because 2 plus 2 is always 4, right? And it doesn't have to remember anything, right? it's very easy to set up uh, lots of functional tests and, and verify that your component is behaving correctly. When components ma maintain state, now it's hard to, to, to test it because you have to put the component in a particular te in, a, in a particular state, right, and evaluate all the different com combinations of the state transition graph. Yes. Right. So ideally, if you can get away with it, uh, you should try and do use functional uh, com uh, components that are built out of functions. Yes. But in this case, in class, uh, we need state. We need state. We need to be able to remember, right, that the current layout is grid or table. Right? So we're going to have to abandon uh, our implementation of using a function. Right? Instead, we're going to use a class, right? a full-blown class. Make sense? All right, so let's do that. All right, so let's, uh, let's re-implement this, uh, but not using a function. Right? Not using a function. All right, so to, to, uh, to move this and, and convert this into a, into a class, we're going to replace const with class. Right? And, um, and, and this class is going to extend, it extends, yes, now, you know, in ES6, you have full-blown uh, inheritance, right, interfaces, you know, you have constructors, you have uh, everything you would expect from a, you know, uh, respectable object-oriented language. Uh, so you have extends here, we're going to extend from React, so React, and React has component in there, right? Meaning, we are a component. We are a React component, right? And we have the curly brackets right here, right? Uh, now, this, com this, uh, this component has lots of functions, right, that we are inheriting. Right? And we're going to have to overload or override a couple of them. Right? In particular, we're going to override the following function. Right? So all components have the following function, render. And guess what it does? Right, it renders. Yes. So whatever this render function returns, whatever this render function returns is what gets rendered, right? Wherever wherever this course manager uh, is used, right? So we're going to say return, right? And in there, we're going to stick this div in there, the same div that we had earlier. So we grab it, paste it in there, and and we should be back in business. Now, if we go back and we render, notice that it's identical where we were before. Yes. Right, the only reason we, we abandoned our function implementation and we went with the class implementation is because we need state. Right? We need to maintain state, we need to handle events, right? and we need, to, we need to mutate the state as it changes from one uh, to another in a state transition graph. Everybody good? All right, excellent. So let's see how, to, how we can uh, maintain state. 